We'll begin this week's Asian highlights with the flooding situation in Thailand. Heavy rains that swelled the Mekong River in the past month have continued to cause high flood in Thailand, while the Thai Prime Minister said her administration will prioritize measures needed to improve flooding situations in the country. The first female Thai Prime Minister, Ying Lak Shinawat, insists that her administration will prioritize measures to resolve the problem of repeated floods, both in the short and long run. The remarks were made after a war room was set up on Thursday to assess updated developments for immediate actions and solutions on the widespread floods in the country. The Premier expressed concern over more downpour in several areas in the coming days caused by a low-pressure mass and a contingent plan announced by the Royal Irrigation Department to release upstream water into some central provinces, namely Ang Tong and Ayutthaya, to help cater flood water temporarily and to ease inundation in more sensitive areas nearby. As both could worsen the flooding situation in critically affected zones, and could even threaten the country's other downstream areas. According to the Prime Minister, state budgets will be utilized phase by phase as the flood relief teams will be initially dispatched to repair local people's houses, buildings and basic infrastructure along with offering immediate assistance to households whose members are killed or injured or whose farmlands or businesses are damaged during the inundation. For the long term, the Pur Thai Premier said that her administration will discuss and work together with all parties concerned to address flood-related problems from their root causes including those concerning systematic water management through an irrigation master plan to be comprehensively implemented nationwide. Thai news agency team reporting for RTN TV. Next up, Myanmar's democracy icon Aung San Suu Kyi on Sunday embarked on her first political trip outside her home city since she was released from house arrest despite a government security warning. More in this report. Thousands of people lined up on the streets to catch a glimpse of Suji's convoy as it passed by, some cheering and waving. Suji, who was released from seven straight years of detention, days after a controversial election last November, traveled to the Bago region about 80 kilometers north of Yangon in a convoy of about 30 cars comprising of members of her National League for Democracy or the NLD party, journalists and diplomats. Suji said during her trip she was calling for unity and support for her NLD party and was ready to cooperate with anybody to improve the standard of living of the people of Myanmar. An NLD spokesman, Yan Win, described the one-day excursion during which Suji opened two libraries and met members of a youth forum as political. In June, the military-backed government warned Suji that a political tour could spark chaos and riots but it passed off without incident. The 66-year-old had spent much of her last two decades in detention, and some observers believe the government would be quick to restrict her freedom again if she were perceived to threaten its rule. But there have been signs of a thaw in relations between the government and Suji recently, with the Nobel laureate holding a second round of talks with Labour Minister Ong Gi on Friday. A joint statement released following the discussions said both sides would work together for stability and democratic development. Also on Friday, the government pledged to continue the dialogue in its first media briefing in the capital, Naypyidaw, since taking power. Akanit Wichianjaran of Thai News Agency, ASEAN TV. On to Singapore. Singapore's first contested presidential election in 18 years will be held at the end of this month and the candidates were unveiled on Wednesday this week. On Wednesday, the names of four presidential candidates who will be vying for the largely ceremonial role as the head of state of the Republic of Singapore on the August 27th election were announced. The candidates are former Member of Parliament Dr Tan Chek Bok, former senior civil servant Tan Ji Se, former Deputy Prime Minister Dr Tony Tan and former NTUC income chief Tan Kin Lian. The four men filed their nomination papers ahead of the noon deadline on Wednesday at the People's Association headquarters, which was the nomination centre. 
the candidates then had a chance to look at their rivals' nomination papers to see if they wanted to file objections. And afterwards, they had a chance to address their supporters. This is the most number of candidates to contest the highest office in Singapore since the first presidential election in 1993. They now have nine days to spread their messages. The eve of the election has been designated as a cooling-off day. The vote will be held on August 27th. Some 2.2 million citizens are eligible to cast their ballots. Thai News Agency team reporting for RCN TV. The ASEAN Economic Minister said that despite the recording positive growth figures, ASEAN economies should remain vigilant in the face of the unstable global economic climate. More in this report. At the recently concluded 43rd ASEAN Economic Minister meeting in Monado, Indonesia, the ASEAN ministers reported that the region as a whole grew by 7.5% last year, fueled by export and domestic demands. Intra-regional trade and investment flows also showed an upward trend. Intra-regional merchandise trade grew by 32% last year as trade value jumped from 1.5 trillion US dollars in 2009 to 2 trillion last year. Foreign direct investment into the region also rose to 75.8 billion US dollars last year, doubling the 2009 value and surpassing the pre-global crisis peak in 2007 of 75.7 billion. Total foreign direct investment or FDI from China, Japan and South Korea surged 62 percent, increasing from 9 billion US dollars in 2009 to nearly 15 billion last year. The investments made up one-fifth of the total FDI in ASEAN. And over the last 10 years, FDI in the region grew at an annual average rate of 19 percent. Despite the positive growth figures, ASEAN economic ministers said ASEAN should remain vigilant in the face of the unstable global economy and should continue to harness its competitiveness. Lingering challenges and risks include the sovereign debt crisis and fiscal problems in some developed markets, rising food and commodity prices and continued financial market stresses. Also at the ASEAN ministerial meeting in Monado, trade ministers from ASEAN and six other countries agreed to set up a working group to speed up the conclusion of the Economic Partnership Agreement or the EPA by the end of the year, which would liberalize trade and investment in Asia and Oceania. The participating countries include the 10 ASEAN countries, China, Japan, South Korea, India, Australia and New Zealand. Akanit Wichentaron of Thai News Agency, ASEAN TV. The Indonesian embassy in Thailand commemorates its national day earlier on the morning of August 17th, marking 66 years of the Republic's independence. Just before 10 a.m. on Wednesday morning, the Indonesian ambassador to Thailand, Mohamed Hatta, along with the embassy staffs, students of the Indonesian International School and Indonesian expatriates in Bangkok, marked the 66th anniversary of their country's independence with a flag hoisting ceremony, followed by the recitation of the proclamasi or the proclamation of Indonesian independence, along with the Pancasila and other articles representing Indonesian nationhood. This ceremony is very significant for Indonesian national identity. Independence Day, of National Day of Indonesia. Uh, yes, the important, is, uh, important thing is uh, this is the Independent Day for the National Day Indonesia. So we have to pride our, our, our country because, you know, uh, my country got the independence is not easy, so we have to struggle with uh, colonial at the time. It was on August 17, 1945, that Indonesian nationalist leader Sukarno read out this proclamation that launched the armed resistance against Dutch colonial rule in the aftermath of the Second World War and eventually gave birth to the modern Republic of Indonesia. Thai News Agency team reporting for ASEAN TV. And finally, travel and living outside a native country is an essential component to ASEAN regional integration and globalization. In this next story, our reporter Pa Nuk Wong Shaum met with five expatriates from ASEAN countries in Bangkok who shared with us their experiences and their thoughts on the benefits and challenges of moving beyond national borders. More details in this report. Since it was founded, 
ASEAN is essentially an intergovernmental organization, a club of government officials and diplomats, of leaders and dignitaries who get together to talk about the shared interests of Southeast Asia. On the other side of that coin are those individuals who already venture across national border to reap the benefit from the shared culture and the similarities as well as the opportunity that exists within Southeast Asia. Here are some of their stories from those who live right here in the city of Bangkok, Thailand. The classical and romantic German composer Ludwig van Beethoven must be proud if he could learn that his music have inspired millions across the world, not least in modern-day Bangkok, centuries after they were composed. Forging a friendship beyond national border, 22-year-old Kin Mian Mon from Yangon, Myanmar, and her Thai friends at Mahidon's College of Music practice Beethoven together for their class. Yeah, it is a great challenge for me to study here. And this is, how to say, the culture is not so different, but um, still a lot of things very different with Yangon and Bangkok. And here I, I have a chance to study with um, very qualified teachers, and I have a lot of talented um, seniors and friends, and it's a great challenge for me. And it's make me, how to say, make me remind me like I need to do more and I need to try hard and yeah. Dream of furthering her study in Europe and one day return to promote classical music in her homeland, Kin started her musical training at the Gita Med Music Center in Yangon and is one of many young people in the region to venture abroad to better hone her crafts. Across town at the Turikit Bandit University, Monoram Eng and Vani Huak from Siem Reap, Cambodia are welcoming a guest at the University Hotel as part of their bachelor training in hospitality and tourism. With one eye on the ASEAN economic integration and the free flow of labour in the hospitality sector, 24-year-old Vani knows that his training here will go a long way in helping him compete for jobs in the region's markets. Uh, in, the, in the next five years, we will have one big community that uh, all the ten countries will join hand together to develop the economy. So I can say the boom of economies will be broader, wider. It means like more hotels, more service, service industry, business, and other companies from international business and national business. So I can say there's a lot of job waiting for us in the next five years. 24-year-old Monoram, who dreamed that one day he would become an owner of a resort in his hometown of Siem Reap, also want to travel around ASEAN to gain as much experience as possible in hospitality. Mm, if I can, I, I, want to, I want to run my own business in, as hotel, hotel manager of my own hotel. But if I can't, I just work for other people that work in the hotel, or it can be I want to be a lecturer in hospitality and tourism. I think they, they can uh, produce more human resources in, in the regions because like, some, some countries like Laos, Cambodia and Vietnam, they have very low human resources. So if they can come to Thai, Thailand or can be Singapore or Malaysia, they can uh, upgrade their human resource management and, and then they can work with other, other hotel chain, international hotel chains. And then the, the, re, the revenue for the, the people, the local people will be increased. For many professionals in ASEAN, working across border has been both an opportunity and a challenge that required a certain level of professional determination and cultural open-mindedness, like Mare Poritanita, a young Indonesian office worker in Bangkok who studied in Thailand before started working here. I came from, which is uh, central Java. So uh, after I finished school here in Indonesian embassy, I'm studying in uh, APEC, Assumption University. Uh, there, even though there are lots of um, other foreigners from Europe, America, but then uh, there are lots of Thai people. Those Thai people, like, they are the ones who teach me like, lots of, uh, about Thai cultures and everything. And I'm surprised that uh, we, we, we actually have a similar like, in ancestors and everything. But then uh, the, the culture, the acculturation of the culture is still 
really, really deep. Started from the Indonesian school of Bangkok, which is located within the Indonesian embassy's ground, Mary, along with many young Indonesian expats who grew up in Thailand, possesses a strong sense of Indonesian identity and at the same time are more open to living and working in Thai society. 27-year-old Dimas Haristopan Saraki, who was born and grew up here in Thailand, felt that ASEAN integration could not come soon enough to make people like him feel more at home in Southeast Asia. It's, I'm also waiting for the integration of the ASEAN community because, like, for my own experience, I was born here and grew up here. I feel like I'm, I, I belong to this country, but, but, but my nationality and my family all are all, all, are all Indonesian and due to the different laws, different countries, I, I feel like there, there are some barriers to, to, to live in, in other countries. If the ASEAN community happen, I hope that I will more feel belong this country, uh, I belong to this country too. Four years from now, the lives of these individuals who are either living or sojourning through Bangkok will be followed by many more and in many other towns and cities across Southeast Asia as the agreement between the governments of ASEAN will hopefully widen the education and professional opportunities for the people of this region. The stories of these individuals are reflections of similarities and differences, of hopes and dreams, of opportunities and challenges that came about from those who have looked beyond national borders and seized the day. I'm Panu Wong Chum of Thai News Agency, reporting for ASEAN TV. And that's it for this week's ASEAN Highlights. On behalf of everyone here at the ASEAN News Desk, I hope you all have a lovely weekend. Swadiha.